during our last segment we talked about German boilers and German boiler design. At the end of that segment I encouraged the viewers to send us a question and ask us anything about a steam locomotive that they wanted to know or something that we could demonstrate out in the field to give a little bit better representation of how an item works. We received about three different questions all related to injectors and not long after that we received the questions there was an, actually a thread on RYPN that asked questions about an injector. So I thought I'd take a few minutes today while we have this locomotive and the injector up and running to go through some of the more common problems that we see with, in, with injectors and things that we can do to solve those problems or help make the injectors work a little bit better. This particular injector, which is found here in Switzerland on the 141R568, is an Edna non-lifting injector. And we can get these injectors and parts for these injectors still in America, not for Edna's, but the Strasburg Railroad Company still makes the Sellers brand injector. Uh, Bernie Watts at Backshop Enterprises still makes some lifting type injectors. And we here at Wasatch Railroad Contractors can get injectors from England and also from China, most of which have the original or like replacement parts where you can fix pretty much any injector. But lifting injectors and non-lifting injectors have two, though they're similar functions, work a little bit differently and perform the same task just a little bit differently. So we're going to talk about the non-lifting injector and how this injector works and then we'll compare it a little bit to how the uh, lifting injector works. The lifting injector is normally found higher up on the locomotive, typically in line with the cab, where the engineer or the fireman can easily operate the injector from the cab or from some simple linkage. Usually non-lifting injectors are found underneath the cab or below the working gear and they don't require the water to actually be sucked up to the injector. The weight of the water in the tank actually pushes down on itself, pushes it to the injector, then all the injector has to do is put the water into the boiler. The way that the injector actually puts the water into the boiler is it starts right here with the steam portion of the injector. What we do is we take a volume of steam and we basically compress it by shooting it through a nozzle. When we compress it as it goes through that nozzle, we take a large volume of steam and turn it into a smaller volume. And in so doing, we increase the velocity of the steam, or the speed of the steam. As the steam passes through this first chamber, it comes in contact with the water, which comes down into the injector through this body right here. And we actually mix the water and the steam through another cone and through another series of nozzles that extend down through the injector this way. And we, re we, we repeat the process that was done with the steam one more time, which is to take a large volume of water, send it through this cone, and as we're crushing it through the cone, we're actually increasing the velocity of the water. The water and the steam combined come into the final chamber down here, and at that point it's rammed into the boiler. And what's interesting to note about this is that the water is not necessarily being pushed into the boiler by steam pressure, it's being rammed into the water by the speed that's been created by the steam and the water mixing going through the different nozzles of the injector and then being rammed into the boiler because of the speed of the water. The difference between this and a lifting injector is that not only does the injector, a lifting injector put the water into the boiler, it also has to suck the water up into the injector before it can actually ram it into the boiler so it's got an additional function. These injectors typically were a little less maintenance and they were had fewer problems typically. Nonetheless they still had the problems. A couple of the most common problems which gets us back to the question from RYPN is a few of the most common problems that we see with any injector, be it a lifting injector or a non-lifting injector, there are a few of them so we'll just go through them quickly. One of them can be that you've got some kind of an air leak in the water system. Anywhere from this point back to the tender, if you've got air in the system, the injector isn't going to want to pick up is the term that we use. And by picking up, what I mean is that it's going to grab the water, mix the water and steam together, send it through the cones proper, the nozzles properly, and then inject the water into the boiler. And the reason that the, the air or the leaks in the line cause a problem is that it causes turbulence in the flow. So instead of the water being able to flow into this injector naturally, those pockets of water disturb the flow and then it causes the injector to want to break. A breaking injector is an injector that won't pick up and continue running without it blowing steam or water or excess out of the overflow pipe at any given time. Another thing that can cause an injector to break quite frequently is the temperature of the water in the tender. 
if the injector is blowing back, if the steam nozzle doesn't close or the, the starting valve isn't working properly, and we've got a lot of blowback into the injector, we can actually heat the water in the injector. One of the interesting principles about the injector is that it works on the principle of hot, hot steam and cold water to make it function properly. So if we get the water in the tender too hot, then the injector won't work quite as well. And that problem is more pronounced on a lifting injector than it is on a non-lifting, but nonetheless, we've got to keep the balance of cold water and hot steam as a vital concept of making sure that the injector works. Another common problem that injectors will have is that the nozzles will start to actually wear out. The flow of steam going through the nozzle, the water going around it, can actually cut it and cause it to not have an even flow. And that uneven flow, just like air in the line, will cause turbulence. And once we start to cause too much turbulence inside the injector, it's not going to work any longer. So if you've got an injector that's got a braking problem, you really want to look at a few things very quickly. First of all, how hot is the water in the tender? It's one that's generally overlooked. Second of all, do we have any air leaks between the tender and the injector itself? And then third, obviously, what kinds of problems do we have in the injector? Uh, in, inside of the nozzles, inside the body itself, is it plugged up, is it clogged up, is it leaking, is it sucking air? All of these things combined can cause a uh, braking injector. One of the things that I like to emphasize and that we actually do here at Wasatch Railroad Contractors is bring injectors in and give them a rework or an overhaul from time to time. The injector, just like any other appliance on the locomotive, the air compressor, the water pump, the generators, they all need constant maintenance to keep them in proper working order. So I'd recommend that if you're having injector problems, find somebody that you know that you can trust, contact them, say, hey, this is what we've got going, this is what we need to do. Let us know, we can help you uh, figure out the problem or we'll send you the right people, make sure that you get the problem addressed the way that you need to. <clears throat> so that's a little bit about how an injector works. Hope that helps and hopes that answers some questions. Now, we're gonna start a new program here today at Wasatch Railroad Contractors. We've gotten a lot of really good response from these videos that we've been doing. So much so that we wanna start a new program today where we actually give back to you, the viewers, something that might be of interest. So today, for the first three viewers, come to our web page and send us back a note, we're going to send you a free Wasatch Railroad Contractors t-shirt. We wear these t-shirts quite often, we have them in a variety of sizes, so just send us a note, say hey we watched the video, uh, either we really liked it or we really didn't, I want to be one of the first three that responded, would you please send me a shirt, we'd be happy to do it. We'd like to see how much of a response we get from that, because in the next few months we're actually going to unveil a whole new web page for the company. It's going to direct you a little bit better to how we do our products, how we do services, and some of the other things that we offer here within the company. So we encourage you, be one of the first three to send us a note, we'll send you the t-shirt. We really appreciate the fact that everybody's watching, these videos have been a lot of fun to make, we're really enjoying it. And again, we're going to offer an invitation to everybody. If you've got any kind of question, please send it to us. Next time we're out in the field, we'll bring a camera with us, we'll do a video for you, and we'll give you back some answers the best way that we can. So once again, thanks for watching. We really appreciate it. We'll hope to see you uh, through our next episode.